Okay, let's start. So it's like two minutes before official schedule. Good to see many friends. Uh, yeah, most people here I know uh, for a long time. Uh, today we're going to, to talk about our new bridge, which is an arbitrary message bridge. Um, who knows what like arbitrary method message bridge stands for? Like, what is it? Do you have any ideas? Okay, cool. What what do you think? Yeah, that's right. That's kind of generalized solution for cross-chain communications, right? Like you know, TCP for internet. Um, yeah, the the AMB is a is a is a mode of operation of our bridge product, which we call Token Bridge. It's a successor of uh, a product known as uh, Parity Bridge. Uh, in 2017, we forked it out, and after I completely rewrote it, uh, like all parts, oracles, contracts, and so forth. So now it's an independent project. And uh, we launched our first bridge in May 2018, almost two years ago. It was a specialized bridge to solve one exact problem, right? How to bring um, native tokens of a side chain to mainnet, right? Like, And why do we need to do this? It's because uh, on um, when you're on side chain, it's quite hard to get liquidity from you know some tools which are available on mainnet, for example, on DEXs. Right. So we built a bridge which allowed uh, to um, lock tokens on, on a side chain and get wrapped tokens, uh, wrapped ERC20 tokens representation uh, on mainnet. Right. And after we listed this uh, wrapped token uh, on decentralized exchanges like Bank or Uniswap and so forth. Right. So this bridge is uh, still operating uh, since May 2018 till now with uh, kind of the same security settings without any like, incidents, without downtime and so forth. But when we think about this, this bridge is very specific to one specific small network with uh, for a specific use case, for a specific token and so forth, right? So people can use this infrastructure and this you know, thing only for, for one purpose, move one specific token from chain to chain. Uh, and when we like started to build uh, uh, one more uh, bridge for um, uh, for for Dai. It was a like different use case. So we built a different type of bridge, which allowed to lock Dai on mainnet and convert it into XDai, which is a native token on a side chain. And now this bridge supports Dai and Sai, and in March it's going to support um, Chai also. So XDai chain will be X Chai chain, uh, and this is also a very specific uh, bridge. And um, the third bridge we launched was a bridge between uh, Ethereum and, uh, and uh, Ethereum Classic to wrap um, uh, Ethereum Classic native token and to wrap the token on, on the Classic. So the problem for, for all these um, bridges is that uh, we have to have um, a lot of infrastructure, right? So like for minimal security settings, it's like three validators per bridge you know, to have uh, two or three signature to relay events. It's uh, some DevOps. Um, you know, scripts, Ansible playbooks, also some monitoring tools, um, full nodes uh, in ideal security settings, validators of the of, bri of the bridge host both full nodes on the same node where they have this Oracle, right, to query chain locally and not trust to infure and other services. So just think about this, you know, how many servers, how many operations. Also, mm, security, of, security model of token bridge, uh, is based on uh, like multi-level uh, groups and uh, and uh, decisions that these groups can make. So, for example, uh, to select validators, there's one multi-seek. To um, uh, change parameters of like limits, it's another multi-seek. To upgrade, it's another multi-seek. This multi-seeks can be like zero x zero, right? So we can make this bridge uh, uh, permissionless. But in in normal operational mode, it's uh, you know some group of people holding these keys just in case some decisions should be made, right? For PO, it's three validators. For XDI, four validators. And it's all its all about like management and management of updates, you know, all these G words that uh, what we're all uh, tired of. So when we um, when we started like to, to think about uh, like other bridges um, and adoption of these bridges, like each new side chain or projects, they required again and again the same interaction of, of bridges. So that's how we um, started to think about a generalized solution where we can have one pair of, uh, um, for one pair of networks, one set of validators, 
and bridge can be open to anyone. So like anyone can use the same bridge without like asking us or asking permissions to do anything. But we can use the same bridge to um, have uh, kind of the same um, uh, the, uh, the same use cases as we have now and build new use cases. And the idea was, can we make a bridge which will support all previous token standards, all current token standards, and all future token standards? So that's how we come out with the idea. Come out with the idea of uh, AMB. So it's kind of bad practice to put a lot of information on the slide, um, uh, but you know that's uh, the idea. So like the uh, as a uh, the gentleman said that uh, the idea is to uh, of A and B is to relay any data between between two chains, right? So the uh, uh, there are in, in in this type of uh, uh, setting, uh, there are contracts on both sides, and the contract which is like originating a call, encoding the um, uh, the method call, which can include or exclude parameters of the call, uh, and after the the data is relayed uh, in here in this example, I put from Ethereum to a side chain by oracles. Uh, and after the um, uh, A and B contracts on another side uh, execute this call um, by sending it to the um, receiver contract. I will have a graphical representation of this in a few slides. Um, okay, so like the, uh, the uh, to call the the A and B bridge is uh, as simple as to to call the function and uh, pass the um, address of the contract uh, on the another side of the chain. Um, encode data. With uh, uh, with the method and, um, uh, and the parameters, uh, which will be called another network, and also to specify the um, the gas limit, which will be uh, spent by this call another network. So it requires some um, uh, preparation for the method call, but you know for for many um, for many use cases like you know token transfers, this uh, uh, estimations uh, you know we can know them in advance, and uh, uh, there is no need to like. Uh, any new uh, math for it. So that's uh, our main uh, kind of picture about the uh, how the bridge is working. Um, so Alice, uh, when she is interacting with the contract, contract encodes um, some uh, method call for her, and calls the AMB contract proxy, uh, and calls required to pass message. Validators are listening to events um, uh, originated from the AMB contract and. Uh, a link the events from the uh, one uh, from the AMB contract to another AMB contract on another chain. So in, he, in this scenario, we have a quorum of you know three validators and only two validators achieve this quorum. So the message is relayed, and the foreign AMB contract calls the method on to receiver contract on another side. Right. So here is an example uh, for the like real world scenario. So if we want to transfer ERC-677 token, which is a, who knows what is ERC-677? Kind of not many people are using it. But this is a uh, ERC-20 token, ERC token um, uh, standard with a transfer and call. So we can have a, a function call after, after transfer, which is uh, convenient for interaction of uh, a token contract with uh, other contracts. So here Alice is doing transfer and call of this Tayo token token. And um, that's something that we call mediators. So mediators uh, as a smart contracts, which is like, you can think about them like libraries of uh, smart contracts, uh, which can be, uh, which you can take for, for some existing token types. For example, we have a, a library for ERC-677 or 721. So this, uh, uh, this library is already built, but like if you need other token standard or some, uh, non-standardized uh, interaction, um, you can build mediators yourself. So we call pair of mediators as an extension. So we have AMB bridge, and you can put an extension on the bridge, which can transfer tokens from chain to chain, right? And this extension consists of two mediators. So let's say if, um, if this uh, Alice is uh, working with a mediator of, I don't know, synthetics contract, right? And uh, she wants to send uh, SUSD from chain to chain, so most likely she she'll be using um, mediators deployed by uh, Synthetics team, right? But AMB contracts deployed by you know sub by the I'd say DAO, right, which is supporting uh, the um, AMB bridge, but mediators can be deployed by anyone, and anyone can um, interact with AMB contracts. 
Um, so when the uh, when mediator is uh, um, mediator is uh, passing the message to another side, another mediator uh, on the sidechain side uh, taking this uh, uh, call and uh, and actually convert it into the mint operation on the uh, RC six seven seven token on the sidechain side. So for users, it's almost uh, um, you know they, they don't see all these things, right? They just call, make one call, and they they get um, uh, tokens on the other side. So it's very convenient. So the the call uh, can be we can, we can have it synchronous or asynchronous depends on the use cases. We can have synchronous call uh, across multiple chains. It's also um, supportable. So for example, now we have. Uh, AMB bridge deployed between uh, POA and uh, um, mainnet and XDI and mainnet. Uh, and soon we're going to, to deploy it on uh, on classic so we can have, uh, you know, interactions like, okay, send token from XDI to mainnet and from mainnet to classic, right? It's uh, uh, it's within the design and the scope of the of the protocol and there is no need to, um, <coughs> to additional changes, right? Uh, when validators are watching for this event, they have, because you know all these chains, Classic, uh, Ethereum, and POA, they're not instantly final, their uh, validators are, are watching for you know, some number of blocks to finalize the chain. For now, we have like eight blocks for, uh, for, uh, uh, for mainnet. I don't remember how many we have for Classic, but it's more. And, uh, uh, and uh, same for, for XDI, right? So uh, the the um, um, the mediators uh, can implement different token standards, um, and for now we have for for most common for ESC20 and for ESC721, right? So the the bridge is uh, is already audited and deployed between PO and mainnet and uh, XDI and mainnet, and uh, this bridge is I'd say in production and can be used by 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 anyone, right? So that's um, that's actually that's what very exciting me about because you know some you know when. I, I'm getting messages like, okay, we deployed mediators and, uh, and we have some questions. And people are actually starting to, um, to use cross-chain communications and I think that's something very important because it's something that you know, cryptocurrencies are started from, right? And also something that cryptocurrencies are, um, should be, right? Like all chains should be connected. When we think about one of the first use cases of cryptocurrencies like trading on exchange, what is trading on exchange? You move token from decentralized storage to centralized, it's kind of bridging, but with different trust assumptions, right? Here, um, trust assumptions are still, uh, if you uh, watch the talk um, by uh, this uh, impossibility of decentralized uh, uh, or trustless uh, exec cross-chain execution uh, uh, for, for cross-chain communications, that is really the case. But when we think about how to, like, uh, like what, what, are, what are problems with, uh, um, uh, with uh, this relaying of tokens, and what is the problem? What what problems can we have with uh, a product like Token Bridge? There are some um, um, there are some obvious like problems, right? Okay, so validators can stop serving their role, right? Or you know contracts can be hacked and so forth, right? And, and there are some measurements in existing. This AMB contract is quite com com quite complex thing, right? Um, so when we when we think about this. Uh, um, these things we we thought a lot about this, but when we think like, is it like decentralized? For now, now, for now, it's not right because fully decentralized requires like open participation uh, of validators, and for now, it's it's not uh, it's not it's not it's not possible, right? But the um, legally wise like, is this bridge constitutes money transmitting of tokens? It's it's not because for like for legal uh, standpoint, AMB bridge is decentralized, and we have legal opinion for for this setting from the US law firm, which is quite cool, and I think that's the only bridge. So now let's, let's get back um, to technology. So when you receive a call, you should you should check who are receiving this call from, right? So you should check that uh, the uh, sender is a uh, address of the bridge. So you have you have to check that, uh, you have, we have some helpers uh, to check a uh, hash of the uh, transaction, which invoked, uh, uh, required to pass message from the, uh, um, from the uh, let's say, Ethereum side, right? And uh, we have a, a helper to check the address of the invoking contract. So before you do something, let's say, before you mint tokens on the sidechain side, when you received a message from mediator, you should check, you know, who are you receiving this message for from, right? Because anyone can send a message from the uh, from the bridge. 
So the the AMB components, uh, as I said, like there are a lot of components, and uh, but you know for for users they only need to like uh, use existing mediators uh, or you know. Uh, Create their own mediators and all this, you know, system contracts, oracles, and DevOps site is supported by us, and uh, we are always open to, you know, ex extend number of validators for validating this um, arbitrary message bridge. Um, yeah, there are some early adopters. Uh, if you remember from my like history side, where uh, we have some um, uh, existing bridges, and we move, we migrate all the existing bridges for POX and uh, etc to this A and B model. So instead of a uh, zoo of uh, bridges, we're going to have one bridge per pair of network. And there are some, some other uh, projects with different token types. For example, DAO stake, they have you know, new, for us, new token standard, ERC 827. First time I, I saw this, but you know, they uh, adapted uh, mediators from 677 and they started to use um, this bridge, right? Uh, yeah, the, it's open source and free to use, so anyone can um, take it and deploy AMB bridges by themselves or use uh, our hosted AMB, um, which is uh, quite quite easy to use. Um, so on, on the doc side, we have a, a full documentation how to like deploy AMB bridge and how to deploy extensions and how to deploy extensions uh, with for different token types, and some token types like ERC721. Required to like more sophisticated uh, integration because they you know um, can contain more a lot of metadata and so forth. So we have a use case based on a CryptoKitty example how to move CryptoKitty from chain to chain uh, without um, um, kind of any additional interactions from from users just by you know sending a Kitty to to a mediator contract. Yeah, that uh, I think my time is up. Right, uh, maybe for like one or two questions. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, sure, thank you. Uh, uh, thanks. What's the gas uh, cost difference between the, let's say, previous method and the new one? Uh, sorry, say again? The gas cost difference. What, is, what do you mean by the gas cost? Like, how much do I spend in the gas for a simple if transfer using the new bridge versus the old bridge? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's, uh, sorry, I don't have this data with me, but I don't think it should be. Because I guess it's more expensive, so. Yeah, it's more expensive uh, because you have to, to. Right, you have more, you have yeah. also this thing, more intermediaries, so it might be interesting to, like, keep the old bridges for the most popular tokens. Uh, well, uh, but, you know, people who are transferring tokens cross-chain, they're, like, less, uh, care, cares about the, like, price of the transfer. They're more interested in, like, Having this safe way from chain to chain, right? Just to, to, to be sure that tokens are going to be transferred eventually. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, they, they, they're kind of people on this bridge, you know, they're afraid, to <laughs> but they're still using it. Uh, any other questions? No? Afri? Uh, thank you. Uh, I don't have a question. So what's the question? No, I don't have any question. Oh, you don't have any question. Maybe Bob? Bob, you always have questions. Um, is that Capilano suspension bridge in Vancouver? For, 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 for the bridge there. This bridge? Yeah. I, I don't know. I just I just searched for like dangerous bridges, you know, like people are afraid of. <laughs> but because, but still because I think it might be my hometown bridge. Uh, so... Yeah, but you're still, you know, walking through, right? Yeah. So. Just don't wobble it, because it's really scary if you do. Okay. Okay. Cool, guys. Thank you.